こんにちは。アイセップユーストリームチャンネル第11回の放送です。えー、今回は、えー、ちょっとショートノーティスで申し訳なかったんですが、えー、特別放送として、えー、デンマークサムソト 100% 自然エネルギーの物語というタイトルで、えー、サムソエネルギーアカデミーダイレクターのソーレン・ハーマンセンさんをお迎えして特別番組をお送りします。本日は約1時間程度の予定をしておりまして最初に20分程度ソーレンさんから今回の旅の目的来日された目的を少しお話しいただいてその後サムソと 100% 自然エネルギーを実現したすごい先進的な地域なんですけれどもそれがどのように達成されたのかについて全体的なお話をいただきます。その後に写真などをサムソトの写真などを交えながら、えー、いろいろ質疑応答とかもしていきたいと思います。というわけで、えー、司会は本,本日司会はアイセプ研究員の古谷翔太と、えー、コーディネーターの本庄妻がお送りします。でちなみに僕は、えー、4月末までデンマークのオールボー大学というところにおりまして、えー、ソ連は、えー、そのオールボー大学の、えー、アソシエートプロフェッサーでもありまして、えーすごく今回、えー、迎えることができて嬉しいです。I'm very happy to welcome you here. Thank you very much. <笑>あっとちょっと今回はあの予算等のとか準備の都合がありまして、えー、全体的な放送は英語でお送りしますが、えー、ポイントポイントでできるだけ僕が、えー、日本語に翻訳したいと思います。というわけで、えー、まずはじめに、えー、ソウレンを、えー、ご紹介したいと思います。I will introduce you now. Uh, uh, you are the、uh, director of Samsung Energy Academy.、Mm -hmm. and you have the very engaged, you have engaged in the, the to transform Samsung Island into 100%, 100% renewable energy. And、uh, I, I, read, I, I will ask you now、uh, what is the purpose of this time you come to Japan? Well, I was invited by the Danish embassy、mm -hmm. in, here in Tokyo、mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the, His Royal Highness, the, the Danish Crown, Crown Prince, was、mm -hmm. visiting、uh, Japan to show his,、uh, his sympathy with the, with the people of、uh, Higashi Matsushima and、uh, Nobiri, Nobiru、uh, with the devastated area from the tsunami. And, and、uh, he was giving, hand, handing over donations from Denmark、uh, mm -hmm. to help the people out there. And, according to, and, and after this, we were supposed to have kind of an entity conference where we were going to talk about、uh, the possibilities of making changes and,、mm -hmm. and, and introduce a green development or green rebuild or reconstruction of the areas in, in, the, in the devastated areas. So, 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 my purpose this time was to, was to kind of help the process of getting started again with the,、mm -hmm. with the rebuild of the, of the tsunami areas. えー、ということで、えー、今回は、えー、デンマーク大使館との関係で、えー、被災地の、えー、東松島や伸びる,し伸びるの、えー、地域に、えー、とデンマークの皇太子が、えー、非常にその地域に、えー、シンパシーというかあの気持ちを伝えたくまた、えーとえー、寄付を復興のための寄付を直接手渡したいということで今回は、えー、それに。関連して、えー、ソ連にも来ていただきました。えー、それで、えー、まあそれに加えてあとは今後のその復興や、えー、とグリーンな発展に向けて、えー、<咳>デンマークがどのように協力、日本と協力していくことができるか、そういった新しいプロセスのスタートにどういった、えー、ヘルプというか支援ができるかということを、えー、話しに来たということです。で、うん、うん、なお。You, you can talk about some sort of energy.、Yeah. Thank you.、Yeah. Well, my, my background is、um, I'm actually a farmer.、Mm -hmm. You can see I have some really big hands and I can work very hard. <laughs>、yeah. So I'm from, I'm from a, a farming background and, and I'm from Samsu, from this island in Denmark. And、uh, therefore, I have a very big sympathy for, for, for the life on, of, of the island. And I think that、um, uh, keeping this, this community alive is one of the main purposes of my job.、Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that in Denmark we decided, like in 1985, not to have nuclear power. 
So this decision led to a kind of a green development in Denmark because if we were not going to have nuclear power, then you could say that we would then have to do something else. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the things that we, we had to do was to focus on biomass, uh, which we had a lot of, and then wind and solar, the potential uh, renewable energy sources, and see how much we could introduce in the, in the, yeah. in the energy mix. Uh, when we when we also used coal and gas and, and other things apart from nuclear power, mm -hmm. um, we had quite a progressive development up till the 90s, mid 90s, and then uh, the, the the minister of in, in environment, Mr. Sven Augen, he decided to have a competition to find a place where they could demonstrate like a 100% transition to renewable energy, and they, he would like to have an island because it was easier to measure and monitor everything happening there. Mm -hmm because you, it, you could easily easy monitor export and import. And uh, we sent in a proposal or like a master plan, mm -hmm. and we were so fortunate to win this and, and be the Danish energy island. Mm -hmm. so, so my story kind of starts in 1998, okay. where I was, the first, I was the first staff mm -hmm. of the Samsø Energy Office, yeah. and we were then supposed to be leading this process towards a 100% self-supplied mm -hmm. renewable energy community mm -hmm. uh, 10 years after. So the time span was a it was a ten year process. I don't know if you want to translate some of it or uh, I, I do want me to continue speaking because I can speak a lot. え、と、今回 <laughs> 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 So you can speak only English. Okay. Then you can first. So, so based on on the on the master plan, we then had to find out how can we actually uh, transform the original fossil fuel community to a, a, a complete renewable energy community. In the beginning, it was really difficult because people kind of said, "Well, this this sounds very interesting, but it also sounds very complicated, and it sounds especially very expensive." Um, and, and we are not rich people, so how can we actually do this? So my job was in the beginning actually to talk to people about the, the difference of, of, you could say, having a, a fossil fuel dependency. Because you could say in 1998 the, the cost of oil was about 30 US dollars per, 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 ga per barrel. And we learned, like, we could say 10 years la later, it was 130 dollars per barrel. We didn't know that then, but we, we predicted that oil prices would go up. Maybe not so much, but they, they, it would go up. So it was interesting for us to say to people, okay, imagine that the oil price will double mm -hmm. or maybe triple mm -hmm. in, in the t time, time span of 10 years. Then the cost of renewable energy will be so much cheaper uh, compared to the price of, of today, mm -hmm. and that is back in 1998. And people started wondering, that's, that's true, it, it, that mi it might be interesting to see that. And then gradually we got people on board the project. They said, okay, maybe we should look at it. And they started investing in small projects in the beginning, and then gradually we invited them to be part of, some, of bigger projects also. But it, it took maybe one or two years mm -hmm. before we had a, a general positive atmosphere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> because people were kind of reluctant and saying, well, it sounds nice, but maybe not yeah. for me. Uh, somebody else yeah. uh, from Copenhagen or <laughs> somewhere else. Yeah. So, so I, ha I, have s I have a few slides here yeah. just indicating what we have do, been doing here. So the status in 10 years' time is that we have, you could say the, the, basic, the basic development was to say we want to have uh, the prime production from biomass, mm -hmm. from wind power, and from solar energy. The, the, these are the main, these are the normal, you could say, the, 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 the regular energy sources we have. And based on that, we used to have quite a lot of oil furnaces in private houses. Mm -hmm. We could exchange them with district heating, and then we established, I can see on the slide, we established uh, four new district uh, district heating plants, and these these four district heating plants are today producing 75 percent of all heating uh, from renewable energy sources instead of imported oil, mm -hmm. and and this is really good because we have the resource. It's from biomass, and the biomass is is from straw from farms and it's from wood chips from the forest. I mean, like here, you also yeah. here in Japan, you have yes, straw from rice fields, and yes. you have uh, wood chips from forests. Yes. You could, you could, or maybe even waste actually. <laughs> um, so, so district heating was a new technology on Samsung, and we needed this to happen uh, so we could transform this. I mean, in 
it, it's sometimes it's a matter of, of introducing infrastructure, mm-hmm. and we had to dig down pipes yeah. so we could we could pump around the hot water to all the houses. Mm-hmm. So we have more than 50% of the houses are today connected to district heating, mm-hmm. and all in all, 75% of all heating is produced from mm-hmm. renewable energy sources. Then the other thing was was uh, wind power. Um, we had some, a few small wind turbines on the island, and we were then introducing megawatt wind turbines, like really big wind turbines. Yeah. And a lot of people said, no, we cannot have big megawatt wind turbines. Maybe the island will flip over, or <laughs> I mean, will it'll drift away because they're so big, the turbines. So we had to discuss uh, what they looked like, and we made computer animations and visualization and showed people this is how it will look in the future. And they had a lot of concerns about birds and yeah. nature, environmental impact, and scenic uh, um, pollution, and all these sort of things. Yeah. So we had to debate why and how are we going to have these turbines. In the beginning, we talked about you, I, as a person, have an electricity consumption. Mm-hmm. Do I want it to come from a coal-fired power plant and produce a lot of CO2, yeah. or do I want it to have to have it from a wind turbine, mm-hmm. producing no CO2? And the choice was easy. I mean, most people said, I want it from a green source. That's nice.